Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is the day that we set aside to honor mothers, even though God has commanded us to honor our parents 24-7, 365. You know, you don't have to be a birth mother to be a mother. My girls often said that they had two moms. Their birth mom, my wife, and their aunt, my wife's sister. You see, motherhood is not an action. It, 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 it's not an action where you give birth. But a mother is a role that you play in someone's life. So I want to say thank God for all the mothers and all the grandmothers who have been nurturers, who have been a role model, who have been a rock for their children. May the Lord bless you richly. Now, according to Wikipedia, Mother's Day was first celebrated in 1907 when Anna Jarvis held the first Mother's Day service of worship at Andrews Methodist Episcopal Church in Grafton, West Virginia. Her campaign to make Mother's Day a recognized holiday in the United States began in 1905, the year her mother, Anne Jarvis, died. Anna Jarvis wanted to set aside a day to honor all mothers because she believed a mother is the person who has done more for you than anyone in the world. In 1908, the U.S. Congress rejected a proposal to make Mother's Day an official holiday, joking that they would, they would also have to proclaim a mother-in-law's day. However, Owing to the efforts of Anna Jarvis, by 1911, U.S. states observed the holiday, with some of them officially recognizing Mother's Day as a local holiday, the first being West Virginia, Jarvis's home state in 1910. In 1914, Woodrow Wilson signed a proclamation designating Mother's Day held on the second Sunday in May as a national holiday to honor mothers. And that's just a little background on how Mother's Day came to be. And now, our message. Our message today is entitled, Carry Him to His Mother. So please turn with me to our scripture, which is found in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18 through 25. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, Oh, my head, my head. The father said to the servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, why will you go to, to, to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, all is well. Then she saddled the donkey and she said to the servant, urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. I want to draw out three things from this passage that we just read that describes a mother. The first thing I want you to notice is that a mother has a caring and nurturing heart. Number one, let me say that again. Mothers have a caring and nurturing heart. Every now and then, Elisha would pass by a wealthy Shunammite woman's house. She would urge him to come in and eat with them. Then she urged her husband to build a room on top of their house for Elisha because she knew that he was a man of God and she wanted to honor him. She placed a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp in the room so that whenever he came by, he could have a place to rest, have a place to refresh himself, have a place to sleep. So one day, Elijah came by and went up to his room to rest. Then it hit him. 
how much trouble this Shunammite woman had gone through for him. She, she, she spent a lot of money building this room, putting furniture in there, preparing food for him. She went through a lot. She gave a lot. So he said to Gehazi, his servant, call her. When she came, this is what he said. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 12 through 13. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? I want you to understand something. I want you to understand this. God is no man's debtor. Whatever you do for God, or whatever you do for his servants, you do for God himself. And he will not let you your labor in vain. He will give you back sometimes 10, sometimes 20, sometimes 30, even a hundredfold more than you gave to him. But he always, always gives back much, much more than you gave to him because God is no man's debtor. Finishing up now with verse 13. Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is to be done for her? Elijah would say that there must be something, something that she wants, something that she needs. I know she's blessed financially. I know she's rich. I know she has it all. But no one has absolutely everything. No one. So what is it that she really needs or really wants? Look at verse 14. Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. It hit him. Call her. And when, when he had called her, she stood in the doorway and he said, At this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord. Oh, man of God. Do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about the time the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. As true as the word spoken to the Shunammite woman by Elijah was the word of God, she conceived and bore a son. So that brings us to the point, the next point. Mothers know what to do. Now the young boy went out into the field one day during harvest time. That's like trying to get dad's uh, attention during Super Bowl. The boy cried out, oh my head, my head. But dad was too busy harvesting his crops. He was too busy directing his workers. He was too busy overseeing the job. He had to provide for his family after all. So. What is he to do? Look at verse 19. The father said to the servant, carry him to his mother. Take the boy to his mother. She will know what to do. Because that's what mothers does. Mothers know what to do. Take him to his mother. That's what the, the, the father said. Take him to his mother. She will know what to do. I'm too busy right now. Whenever we're feeling sick, who is it that we want? It's mom. And once you get married, who is it that you want? Your wife. Another motherly figure. It's just something about a mother's love. Her caring, her nourishing, her ability to just know what to do. Somehow, mothers, somehow wives make everything seem better. They, they make it seem more manageable. So this young boy goes to his father and he complains about his head. His father turns to one of the servants and basically says, I'm too busy right now. Take him to his mother. Carry him to his mother. Dads may be too busy to deal with their children, but guess what? Mothers are never too busy. Now I want you to watch this. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 20 through 
Just verse 20. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. Mom stopped everything. Her whole day froze, and she took care of her child. The only thing now that mattered was the health and welfare of her child. Verse 21 through 23. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I might may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It's neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, All is well. Isn't it something? Mothers know exactly what to do. They can perceive what's going on. They, they, they know how to handle a situation. When our children were in school, their friends were afraid to come around because they said that, that our children's mom, my wife, could look. It was as if she could look into their souls then she would always, she could always tell when something was going on. Then on the other hand, they all loved to talk to her because she would always give them great words of advice. She would speak into their lives. But that is what not just a good mom, but what a great mom does. She speaks into the lives of her children. She speaks into the lives of her loved ones. She even speaks into the lives of the friends of her children. So this Shunammite woman lays the boy down on Elijah's bed and now she's going to see the man of God. This is her first thought. It is not when all else fails, we pray. No, prayer is the first resort. The first thing that pops into our, our head should be prayer, not the last thing. And so this woman went to look for someone she knew could pray. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 24 through 25. Then she saddled the donkey and she said to her servant, urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. Point number three. Mothers put their children slash families first. Mothers will always put their children, mothers will always put their families first, even to their own detriment. She said, urge the, the, the animal on, do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. This mother was on a mission. She had a job to do. It's her child that was in peril. Nothing else mattered now. Not her own well-being, not her weariness. She didn't care about breaking a nail. She, was, she had one mission in life now. Get help for her son. Nothing else, nothing else in this world mattered to this mother as with all mothers. They go into mama bear mode. Do you realize how much your mother has given up for you? I remember as a young boy, we, we weren't exactly rolling in the dough, but I never knew that. Every Christmas, there will be tons of presents underneath the Christmas tree for my sisters and I. I would always have a yellow Tonka truck or some type of truck to play with. That, 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 those, those presents would be wrapped up underneath the tree just waiting for me. And if I didn't get anything else, I would always get two things. Either one of those big yellow Tonka trucks or some type of truck and a gun with a holster like the Cowboys wore slung way down low. I was Texas can. I love those two things. And every Christmas, I would have guns and holsters because I wanted to be a cowboy. So whether we could afford it or not, I don't know. 
All I knew is those presents were there for me every Christmas morning. It wasn't about our parents. It was about us children. Mothers give up a lot for their children. And children, you need to be thankful and show some gratitude for all that your mom has done for you, all that she's given up for you. So to make a long story short, this Shunammite mother did not let anything stop her. She did not let anything get in her way. She did not let anything slow her down until she came to the man of God. He was the only one she thought could truly help her and her son. So that is where she went. She went to where she knew help was. She didn't worry about anything else. Only thing on her mind was getting to the man of God. And guess what? The man of God came and prayed and brought the boy back to life again. That is the love of a mother. She could have given up. She could have thought, it's all over now. He's dead. She could have been too dainty to travel so fast on a donkey. But nothing else in the world mattered to this mother. Nothing mattered at the time. So she had one thought, get help for my son. That's the only thing that was on her mind. So in closing, I want to reiterate three qualities that mothers have. One, mothers have a caring and nourishing heart. Mothers know what to do. Mothers put their children and families first. And you know what? A lot of the time, they do it without any thanks at all. They, they, they get no appreciation. In other words, all the things that they do for their family, sometimes it goes unnoticed. I listened to Marco Merrill's um, testimony the other day about his mother. And I want you to listen to that now. My mom would be at all my sporting events. Let's say I was playing football, okay? My mother would be on the sidelines, and if the play on the field started going one way, my mother would run along like, Mark, get him, get him! I'd be like, oh my gosh. I'd get in the huddle with the other guys, they go, Mark, is that your mother? i go, no, I never saw her before in my life. <laughs> the greatest gift my mother ever gave me, she believed in me. I have overdosed on drugs on three occasions where I should have been dead. But I believe I was kept here for a reason. You show me your friends, I will show you your future. How do I know this? I hung out with losers and I became the biggest loser of them all because I gave up everything I dreamt about as a little boy because of who I chose to surround myself with. My friends would drive me home at two, three, four in the morning. We'd be drunk and high, laughing in the car. We pull up in front of my house in New York, they go, Mark, Mark, the light's on. I go, oh man, my mother's up. See, my mom wouldn't go to bed until she knew her son was still alive. I'd walk in, she'd say, hi Mark, how was your night? I go, it's good mom, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, can I, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, mom, I'm tired, I'm just gonna go to bed. She goes, Mark, I haven't seen you all day and all night. Can I please talk to you? I said, man. Just leave me alone, you bug me. I'd slam my bedroom door on the one person who believed in me. I was on a worldwide tour when we were wrestling overseas in Japan. After my wrestling match, I went upstairs in my hotel room and I fell asleep. There was a knock at my door at three o'clock in the morning. I got out of bed and I looked through the safety window and I could see it was a Japanese promoter. So I opened the door and he said, Mark, you need to call home, there's been an emergency. I went and got on the hotel room phone. I called back to the United States and said, hey, what's going on? They said, Mark, I don't know how to tell you this. I said, just tell me what happened. All of a sudden they started crying. They go, Mark, I can't tell you. I said, just say it. They said, Mark, your mother died. I just threw the phone down. I ran out of my hotel room. I took the elevator to the lobby and when the doors opened up, I just ran out into the street 
I mean, there was no cars, there was no people. It's three o'clock in the morning. And I walked down the middle of a street in Hiroshima, Japan. And I remember looking up and just saying, Mom, I am so sorry. I flew home for her funeral and I was so nervous to walk up to her casket. So I just stood way in the back. And I kept looking from a distance. I kept thinking to myself, Mom, please wake up. Please get up. And then I finally got the nerve to walk up to her. And as I got closer, I could see my mom for the first time. I mean, she was so beautiful. She, she was dressed in white. I mean, she looked like an angel. And I just stood over and I said, Mom, you are my hero. Everything I am, everything I hope to be was because of you. You loved me so much. You gave me a life. You're the only one that ever believed in me. How did I repay her? By getting drunk, by getting high, by getting stupid, by hanging out with losers? For what? All she ever wanted to do was talk to me. I wish I could talk to you now, Mom. I wish you could see what I'm doing. Why couldn't I have been a better son? We are defined by our choices. But if you surround yourself with people involved in drugs and alcohol and pills, it's a dead end. I'm not here to preach to you. I'm here to tell you I lived that life. It leads to broken hearts, broken relationships, broken dreams, and death. For what, to get high? If you have a mother or a father, when you go home, tell them how much you love them. See, my whole life was about being rich and famous. I had to be a millionaire. I had to win the race. I had to win the race to expense my marriage, my family, my friends for what? To be all alone in the world? I learned what is truly important, and that is how precious this gift of life is and our families and how quickly it can be taken away. See, I no longer live in time. I live in moments. See, it's not what's in your pocket that matters. It's what's in your heart that truly matters. Love, love is just a word until somebody comes along and gives it meaning. You, you're the meaning. Mark said that all his mother wanted to do was to talk with him. And he would slam the door and the only one who truly believed in him. The one who, only one who truly had his back. The one who really cared for him. So I wanna encourage you today, if you have a mother, spend some time with her. Talk with her. Make her feel appreciated. She gave up a lot for you. The late nights when you were sick, the school functions, church. Let your mom know you appreciate her this Mother's Day. And you know what? Your mom probably spent many, many hours, many sleepless nights praying for you, praying for your salvation. And probably that's the reason why most of you are alive today because of your mama's prayers. So, what better way to honor her? What better way to show her appreciation than to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior today, Mother's Day, the day that we honor mothers? Why not honor your mom by accepting Jesus? That would be such joy to her heart. You know, the Bible says that there's rejoicing in the presence of God's angels when one sinner comes home. Let there be tons and tons and tons of rejoicing because tons and tons of sinners have come home this Sunday, this Mother's Day. If you want to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, here's what you do. Pray this prayer with me. Confess it with your mouth. Believe it with your heart and you will be saved. Pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on Calvary. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking my sin upon you. Thank you for dying that I might live. I accept your free gift. Help me now to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that simple prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is get a Bible and read your Bible every single day. Learn to pray. Begin to pray in the morning and at night before you go to bed. Pray. Read your Bible. Highlight the, the, those verses that are meaningful to you. Find a Bible believe in church. One that, not one of those progressive churches that, that, that believe that you can live any old way and still make it into heaven. But a church that believes there's a right way and a wrong way. And that they teach you to walk in the right way to pursue holiness. Now, I want to say thank you so much for joining us this Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.